Hey YouTube, it's 4th Street Garage here at 4th Street Garage. Um, as you may remember, last week uh, I had started up the uh, 122 with the new V20 I put in it. Um, seems to be running great, uh, but need to do a few checkups and a couple adjustments. Well, here they are. Here are the spark plugs out of the uh, 122. I'm pleased to say that they all look about right. They've uh, they've got kind of a light brown color to the electrode. Um, I don't see any carbon following them up. There's no pitting or anything to indicate that the engine's been running too lean or too hot. So uh, they look pretty good. If anything, I might rich and the carburetors up just a little bit. Um, I, I need to adjust the timing so I'll need to reset the carburetors anyway. You always want to adjust your carburetors after you adjust the timing. Um, but they look pretty good. These are all Bosch Super Spark Plugs and uh, they're just copper plugs. You know the platinum plugs uh, I've never noticed any difference with and they cost a lot more. I actually got these plugs from rockauto.com and they had a uh, wholesaler clearance and I got them for I think about 65 cents a piece so I, I kind of stocked up on them. Uh, next test we're going to do will be a compression test since I have the spark plugs all out so uh, I'll let you watch that too. In order to do a compression test, you want to make sure that there's no spark uh, when you're turning the engine over. So I'm going to disconnect the secondary wire from the distributor that goes to the coil. And I'm also going to disconnect the uh, wire from the distributor points to the coil. So the coil won't get any pulse to fire. The other thing you want to watch out for when you're doing a compression test is that you don't want to have raw gas going down into the engine uh, when you're just turning it over. So I'm going to also disconnect the fuel line for this test. And there we go. We're all ready to do a compression test. Um, no fuel, no spark. I'm all set up to uh, do a compression test on the engine. The compression gauge I'm using is kind of a nice gauge. It uh, screws right into the spark plug holes. Some, some gauges require that you have a helper hold it into the spark plug hole, but I don't have a helper today, so I'm lucky that I have a nice gauge like this. There's also a release uh, button that will release the pressure after you've done the test. Um, I've got the spark disconnected, the coils disconnected, the fuel lines disconnected, and I've got the gauge connected or screwed into cylinder number one. So I'm going to go turn the engine over um, and as I'm turning it over I'm going to keep the throttle open to allow uh, the engine to turn over as, as quickly as possible. Looking at the gauge, it looks to me that this cylinder's got about 160, we'll go with 166 PSI. That's not bad. So I'm going to go record this and I will do the other three. Uh, you'll notice that uh, all my compression readings are pretty close to each other. They're all within 10 PSI and that's good. You want to have a uh, uh, consistent pressure in the cylinders. If one was a lot lower, it would indicate a problem. Um, the, the numbers I have here are, are pretty good uh, for this engine. Um, you could have them be quite a bit lower, maybe even low as 120, and it would still be acceptable as long as they're all consistent. That's the important part. You'll notice I've got a, a row that I've left blank 
the top row says dry PSI and the bottom row says wet PSI. I'm going to go back and do a wet compression test on each cylinder now. That's done the same way. I'm going to have the spark disconnected and I'm going to have uh, the fuel line disconnected. I'll use the same compression gauge, but this time before I do each test, I'm going to put a little bit of oil down into the spark plug hole. The idea here is that if um, the rings are worn, the oil will temporarily seal them up and I'll get a higher reading. So if my readings are a lot higher uh, with the wet test than with the dry test, um, there's something wrong with the rings. I'm not expecting to have a big different difference here because this engine seems to be in pretty good shape, uh, but we'll do it so I can record it in the uh, maintenance record. I've got an oil can here, and the oil that I've got in the oil can is just, just regular 20W50, the same oil I've got in the engine for, for the summer. And I'm just going to put it down into spark plug number one hole here and just give it a couple squirts. And I'll go ahead and screw in the compression gauge, just like I did with the dry test. Alright, and once again I'm going to go ahead and go turn the engine over for a good five or six good cranks and uh, we'll see what kind of compression I get with the oil in the cylinder. about like 190. You can see that the the compressions for all four cylinders are, are higher uh, than the dry test. Um, I would imagine that the the rings are, are worn a little bit in this car. This car or this engine rather has uh, probably less than 50,000 miles on it. However most of those miles were driven with a, uh, a Weber carburetor that had the incorrect jets installed in it. And I, I do like the dry compressions there. Those are nice and high and, and very consistent. You can look over here and you can see that I've uh, replaced the Weber carburetor with uh, the correct SU carburetors. These are SU HIS6s and they seem to be in good shape and the car runs great. So I'm not too concerned about that compression test, but it's something to write down and keep an eye on. Thanks for watching.